This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is Portland Trailblazers guard and former Memphis Tigers standout, Will Barton. <laughs> Last time I spoke to you, the Grizzlies were in hot pursuit of Mike Miller, the former Grizz sharpshooter who last played for the hometown team five years ago. The past two seasons, Miller was a contributor to the Miami Heat's back-to-back -back title runs. Well, the Grizzlies got their man, signing Miller to a two-year deal. And later in the show, we'll hear from Double M about his decision to return to the Bluff City. Speaking of returning, former Memphis Tiger star Will Barton was in town recently playing in the Bluff City Classic. The Portland Trailblazers guard is gearing up for his second season in the association as he looks to improve on his rookie campaign. Today, I put the full court press on the former Conference USA Player of the Year, Will Barton, next on Sports Files. Will, good to see you again. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it. You're back to play some games in the Bluff City Classic, to see your old buddies, your old teammates, your former coach. What's it like to come back to Memphis? Um, it, it feels great. You know, Memphis is my second home. You know, I loved it ever since, you know, I came here in the summer of my freshman year. And anytime I can get, it back, I get a chance to come back, you know, I always come back. You were so close to everybody in the city, to the fans, things you said to them. They reciprocated. They said the same things about you. Have you run into fans just in your in your days here? And what have they said to you? Um, they always wish me good luck and tell me how much they miss me and you know how proud they are of me. Of me. And um, Memphis fans to me were you know the greatest in the world. They they really supported me and supported the team and you know they really got behind us. And I'm a people's person, so I really always appreciated that. So the rookie season in the NBA in Portland, was it everything you thought it would be? Uh, yes, it was It was ups and downs. It was like a roller coaster. Uh, you know, sometimes you got real high, sometimes you got, you know, real low. You just got to stay real even kill and, you know, keep a clear head and, you know, everything was fine. They always talk about it being being a job, a profession, which it is. Yeah. I mean, you're making money now. This is not college. This is not high school. But can you still have as fun as much fun as you did playing at Memphis, playing in high school? Are you having a good time while it is still your profession? Yes, I'm having a great time. Um, basketball just isn't my job. It's, it's my life and it's my passion. And I, I wouldn't rather be doing any, anything else in the world. So, you know, I always have fun. I wake up every morning. I'm blessed to be able to do what I love for a living. So it's just as fun as it was when I started when I was six years old as it is right now. Yeah, you don't worry about the, the, the bills and all the other things that come with adulthood and with the time you are in your life now as a professional. You just worry about playing a kid's game, right? Yeah, well, now you know now you got bills and things like that. But, you know, when it comes to just the game, I'm still having just as much fun as I did at any other point in my life. Was it the first year harder than you thought it would be? Was it easier or was it exactly what you thought it would be? Oh, I definitely can't say exactly what you would think it would be. Nothing is, you know, exactly what you think it would be. Um, a little bit harder, um, just with me mentally more than anything, coming fresh off college and, you know, being a star of the team and the go-to guy now, you know, you're coming to the NBA and, you know, you just got to start all over from the bottom once again. And um, it was just challenging for me, you know, um, just – more the mental part? Yeah, just just the mental part. Just, you know, you know, learning the rule and, you know, going from playing all game to some games not playing at all. And it's just different. And you know, once I, you know, got used to that, it was, it was pretty much good. So early on there was some struggle with that, but as the season progressed you got a little bit more used to what you needed to do. Yes, no doubt. Was the traveling as grueling as we hear? Yes, it's grueling, man. Uh <laughs> 
road trips are crazy, you know, every city. I mean, every night is a different city sometimes, and you had a, you know, six game, eight game road trip, and you got to pack, and <laughs> it's crazy. Right after the game, you're just going into a new city. And some nights I would be like, man, where, <laughs> where, where am I, man? And someone asked me, you know, where did you just leave? And I'm like, I, I don't know. Wow. I, I can't remember, man. Memphis, as you know, great, great basketball fans. And we were talking before we started this interview that you believe Portland has also great basketball fans, and you're glad to be a part of that. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of Memphis. A lot of, it reminds me just of uh, Tiger Nation. Fans are real passionate. You know, the, the, the whole city really embraces you and, and the team, and, you know, they, they come out to the games, and there's always a, a packed house, and they're cheering to the top of their lungs. And, it's just a great stage to perform on, just like Memphis was. Yeah, so many similarities. They have the one big-time pro team, and it's an NBA team. Now, Memphis has, obviously, the university. And in Portland, you got to go a couple hours to Oregon or to Oregon State. So, really, basketball is the only thing they have. There's no Major League Baseball. They have minor league. There's no NHL. There's no NFL. Yeah, it's just us. We get all the attention, and um, it's a great thing. You know, the fans are just so passionate. And, you know, they help us win a lot of home games because they're just there every night, winning or losing. They're just going crazy in there and bringing us full of energy. And, and I'm a guy who feeds off the crowd and energy, so it's right. definitely great for me. What is the, the one area of your game that, after playing your first year in the NBA, you say to yourself, I really need to get better at this? What would it be? Um, being more consistent with my jump shot, especially from three point. Right. Um, I feel like if I can, you know, get that down pack and get more consistent with that, then I'll be, you know, in the lead for a long time. So I've, I've really been focusing on that and telling myself, you know, we're going to get better at this and hopefully master it and, and just keep getting better. And that's just work during practice, uh, during the summer, putting up a lot of shots. Is that how you get better? Yes, definitely. I'm um, just going in the gym, locking myself in there and not coming out, trying to, you know, make 500 threes a day and and just being real precise and persistent in what I'm doing and what I'm trying to accomplish. And, you know, when you set goals, you got to have a plan. And, you know, I try to just follow through on my plan and, and, and work out every day just to, you know, get my results and not just for tomorrow, but for the long road. It says an awful lot about you and your game when you, you didn't shoot the ball well, but when you were in there, you were able to get to the hole. I guess if you feel that the jump shot's not there, then I'm going to have to score by going inside. You're not afraid. You did it in college uh, to rebound the basketball, to get bumped around. Yeah. You're obviously a lot stronger, but still yeah. going up against some of those behemoths in the NBA. Yeah. You're not afraid to mix it up with them. No, 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 you can't be afraid. You know, it reminds me kind of my, my freshman year. My freshman year in college, I didn't shoot the ball well from three. Right. It was the same thing. I got in the gym and really worked on my shot that whole summer, and I came back a much improved shooter. And so that's what I'm ho hopefully, you know, can carry that into same thing with the NBA. You know, I didn't shoot the ball real good my um, rookie year, and now we're working hard, and hopefully it can translate and happen again. And, uh, you know, you can't be afraid to do different things. I pride myself on being a complete player. So whether right. it's rebounding, defending, or being a playmaker for my teammates, you know, whatever it is, whatever I can do to stay on the floor, contribute to my team, and, and getting wins, then I'm going to do it. You know, I love being, you know, an all-around player. You recently completed your second summer league with Portland. You played a few games, had put up some really good numbers, and then you hurt your knee a little bit. Obviously, the knee's okay because you're playing in the Bluff City Classic, but talk about your second stint in the summer league with Portland. Um, I felt like it was pretty pretty good. You know, I learned a lot. Um, I gained a lot of confidence going into it and coming out of it. I, like you said, I did some pretty good things. You know, some things didn't go my way, but, you know, I feel like overall it was a great experience and I got a lot, of, a lot better from it. Um, I tweaked my knee in one of the games and missed, you know, a few of the games, but, you know, I'm fine. My injury is good, nothing long term. I'm 100%, you know, just a little banged up. You know, that's basketball. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I took a lot from it, and I feel like, you know, it's given me, given me a lot of confidence going into the regular season. Will, what was it like during the season when you came back with Portland to Memphis and played at FedEx Forum? It was crazy. Uh, you know, I'm just looking around the arena and saying to myself, you know, I used to perform here. <laughs> you know, I used to uh, 
had a crowd going crazy, and it was like, you know, just coming back home, I loved it. You know, I'm just thinking about all the fans and, and having that Tiger uniform on, and now I'm coming here as a visitor. It's just, it's just crazy. Damian Lillard, really a, a breakout year, rookie of the year. You got some good young talent on that team. Talk about Lillard and talk about the prospects going forward with Portland. Um, Lillard's a big time player, you know, rookie of the year. Um, right now, I think he's um, at the, in Vegas at the USA team, right. um, mini camp. And um, he just, you know, not just a great player, he's a great person, man. He's very cool and funny and just a great guy to be around. And, you know, the sky's the limit for him. He's a big time talent. And we got a lot of um, good players coming back. You got LaMarcus Aldridge, you know, all star, you mm -hmm. know, one of the best big men in the league. You know, you got Wes Matthews, one of the best shooters in the NBA. And uh, Nick Mattoon, one of the, you know, best all around small forwards. You know, we brought in some new guys in Darrell Wright, who's a, Knockdown shooter, big Robin low pass, you know, stuff up the middle. And, you know, we should make things interesting this year. Hopefully we can make a playoff push. Who were the uh, toughest guys you had to go up against? Toughest guys I had to go up against? Kobe Bryant, definitely the toughest guy. I think I've heard of him. Yeah, I, I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. Uh, give me a few others. Maybe oh. some that people would be a little surprised to hear. Um... Surprised to hear. I don't know. Surprised because everyone in the NBA is good, but I know right. I had some good matchups with um, Clay Thompson. He's pretty mm -hmm. good. Um, who else did I play against? Um, I would imagine you were guarding guys both taller than you and shorter than yeah, you. Yeah, versatile guarding guys. Like you said, taller and shorter than me. Um, let me see who else did I guard. Man, that was that was pretty good. Um, I'm trying to think. Did you was. ever match up with LeBron with Miami? No, no, I never matched up never. with LeBron. I matched up with Kevin Durant. He's good. <laughs> <And> you know. <laughs> now, that's a nightmare matchup. Yeah, Russell Westbrook. Um, yeah, so you run the gamut from guys at 6'10 and, and, and point guards. Yeah. Does the um, – is there a lot of trash talking going on? Oh, uh, yeah. Now, you're, you're known to open the mouth a few times, but, I mean, what's, uh, what's it like in the NBA? It's the same way. You know, I'm a guy – I'll talk a little trash only if you – you know, start with me. So the other person has to start. Yeah, then you're I'll, not gonna be the star. Yeah, okay. once you start, I'm not gonna shut up. So though. give me, give me one or two that just don't shut up. I wouldn't say guys. I wouldn't say a lot of guys don't. That I wouldn't say a lot of guys talk a lot of trash. But you know, just being vocal for that team. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, Chris Paul talks a lot. Right. Um, Kevin Durant, he's a good lead. He talks a lot. Kobe talks a lot. You know, those those guys that are the go-to guys on the team talk a lot. What advice would you give? Somebody like Adonis Thomas, DJ Steffens, who are trying to get to the association, and younger players on the Memphis squad, guys that you played against, you know, Joe Jackson and, and Chris Crawford and guys like that. What, what's your advice? Um, I tell all those guys to um, keep their head up, first of all, stay focused, and live, breathe, and eat basketball, man. You got to really focus. If you really want to do this, this is a rare opportunity. And a lot of guys say they want to do it. A lot of guys want their life and want their attention. But I see that, that, that they don't they don't want to put in the work. You really got to get in the gym and and be a gym rat, man. It's 24-7. Yeah, you just got to be a gym rat and make sure you're working on stuff you need to work on. And just be a great person and then things will happen for you. But you, you got to stay in the gym. You, you just got to. That's the only way. You know, basketball is only going to reward you if you're treating it right. Mm -hmm. The only way you can treat it right is to stay in that gym. Your brother Antonio, former Memphis Tiger, transfers to the University of Tennessee. They hated volunteers. <laughs> your thoughts when you heard that your brother was going to play on the other side of the state of Tennessee? Um, when, when I heard, um, <laughs> it was a little awkward at first. You know, I'm like, he's going to Tennessee. That's the rival <laughs> and things like that. But I'm happy for him. I think he made a great decision, and I think he made the best decision for him. You know, I didn't want to get too much involved with it. I wanted him to make his own decision and, and do his own thing, and that's what I'm most proud of, man. Right. He came up with a decision on his own. He thought it through. He had a plan. He followed through on it, whether it was Tennessee or Memphis or Missouri, wherever he's playing at. I just want him to be happy and be able to, you know, look himself in the mirror and say, you know, I made this decision, and I can live with it. And now I'm rooting for him at UT and, and I know he's going to do great and, and he has my support and I'm behind him 100%. Are you able to keep up with the Tigers 
that much while playing in, in the NBA? Of course, man. You know, I keep up with him a lot. Last year, I was following all the way through, and I'll be doing the same for the rest of my life. Will, we're, uh, we're done one portion of our interview, but I like to end every interview to learn a little bit more about our, our guests with something called Thigh for the Road. So I'll ask you a question. Quick answer. You don't have to, to dwell on it too much. So whatever comes to mind first. What is your favorite professional sports team? You cannot say the Portland Trailblazers. Wow. Baltimore Ravens. The Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. The Super Bowl champions. Of course. And for those who don't know, of course, you're from Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah. Your favorite professional athlete of all time? Kobe Bryant. But you don't tell him that when you're guarding him. No. No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. I can't tell him that. What's your favorite music? And, and do you listen to a lot of music? I remember with Memphis you did. Do you listen to a lot of music before a game? Yeah, I still listen to What a lot do you listen music. to? Right now I'm listening to Jay Z, um, mm -hmm. Holy Magna, uh, Carter. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah, that's a, I think that's the best. What do you think? I'm out right now. What do you think about Jay Z getting into uh, the representation part of things? I think it's great. He's already, you know, got KD, Robinson Cano, Scott not, Boyd. Not too shabby, huh? Skylar Diggins, he's a genius, man. <laughs> Your favorite movie of all time? Uh, he got gay. He got gay. Great yeah. movie. He got gay. Good choice. Have you seen anything recent? Uh, any movies recent? The most recent movie I've seen is the Kevin Hart, his um, stand-up comedy thing. Oh, the comedy? Yeah. Um, okay. Let me explain. It was hilarious. I asked you that because I wanted to see if you've seen The Conjuring yet. I'm, I'm debating whether or not to go. I don't uh, like real scary movies. I've heard about that. I got to go see it. I'm going to go see it in Memphis. So anybody <laughs> see me at the movie theaters, be sure to say what's up. There you go. Final question for you. Your favorite TV show of all time? Mark. Not even close. Man! Mark. That took one second. Mark. Mark. <laughs> As soon as you said TV, I already knew you what got you were it saying. Mark. Bye hey, bye. Will, we're all so proud of you. We're very happy to see what you're doing with your NBA career. Continued success. Great to see you again. Thank you. Thanks for having okay, me. Okay, Will. Thanks. We'll take a break. When we come back, it's our overtime segment. Stay with us. The name Dizzy Dean is synonymous with baseball, and for several weeks in South Haven, Mississippi, young baseball and softball players converge on the area for the Dizzy Dean World Series. Over 100 teams make the trek to Snowden Grove Park and Greenbrook Park, meaning millions of dollars are dumped into the local economy. Thousands of ball players and their families stay at local hotels and eat at local restaurants. But the most important thing for the players is that they get to compete against the best for national championships. And here's just a taste of what it's all about at the Dizzy Dean World Series. We came out here in 1999 with uh, three or four age groups. Uh, it's been good to us. We had the girls out here and then uh, brought them out here. Then we brought the rest of the teams out here. So. At this point, we're bringing in all the girls and all the boys and playing them here. We have six through 19 and all the girls. So we, we, have, we were having tournaments before and they would be in different places around the country. It this uh, more convenient, better atmosphere, better people to work with. Uh, with more equipment to work with, and that's uh, why I think we've, uh, we've brought it out here. We have got this week, starting today, we've got 45 teams, uh, probably average 12 kids on a team. We just finished the 6s, 9s, and 11s at uh, Snowden Grove. Uh, before that, we finished the girls out here at Greenbrook. Uh, th that was probably in the 6, 9, 11, 14, probably 100 teams over there. And the girls, I think we had uh, close to 50 teams. We got 45 teams out here in the uh, eight-year-olds. So we got, we got quite a number. What divisions and leagues are represented here? Everything from the 6th to the 19th, and the 6th through the 18th and the girls. 
this is a uh, World Series championship. Most of them go back home and play football or whatever they do. But yeah, this is uh, about the end of it. First baseman for the San Francisco Giants, the one that comes to mind real quick, I believe his name's Bo. Uh, but there's a lot of them like that. I think for the kids, this means everything to them. It's, a, it's an experience, and, uh, kind of a once in a lifetime deal where they get to come out here and they make friends and make friends for a lifetime coming out here with, with uh, people from their community. Last year with the uh, with a bunch, we had like five 11 year olds on that team last year. Same Tallahassee Senators team. Those guys have moved on. 13 year old ball, the ones I had at 12 last year. But we won this thing last year, not planning on it. It was very special. So you know, we put the squad together out of the same old park and uh, came back up here again, trying to do back to back for the state of Florida, and uh, worked out for us today. As I mentioned earlier, the Grizzlies have added old friend Mike Miller to the roster, thus giving the team a legitimate outside threat. In addition, as of our taping date, the team was in hot pursuit of a backup point guard and put the full court press on Mo Williams, who met with the team earlier this week. Nick Calathis, who I told you about last show, was in town as well. The Grizzlies front office is determined to give Mike Conley more rest by signing one or two more players with the ability to play point guard. But the big news was the return of Mike Miller, who was welcomed back on Tuesday. Thank you all for being here today. Um, on behalf of uh, Robert Perra, our chairman and controlling owner, myself and the entire organization, uh, this is just a fantastic day, a very exciting uh, day to be here and, and to, to welcome Mike Miller back to Memphis. Um, when, when Mike was first amnestied and we were all texting back and forth about how we were going to try to recruit him to come back to Memphis, um, one of the texts I think uh, someone from our organization sent me, they said, what are we going to do? What, you know, what's the plan? And I texted him back, uh, the kitchen sink. Uh, and that's what we tried to do. Uh, to Jason and Robert and the other owners, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, it's uh, exciting to be back here, and uh, I was able to spend some time. I know Jason from the past, but I got to spend some time with Robert. And you guys should be proud of what they're doing. You know, uh, that was our biggest thing. It was the commitment to winning after coming from two championships. Um, that's that was the biggest thing for me. And their commitment for winning, making sure that we are uh, the Grizzlies, the players, the staff have everything they need um, to move forward and to win. And uh, it's a lot easier said than done. And they've make, definitely made that stride and that, that step. And uh, I thank you guys for that and the opportunity. Uh, to the fans um, and the people of Memphis, man, I, we missed y'all. And uh, I'm so happy to be back, you know, 10 years ago or whatever it was when I came here. Me and my family um, fell in love with, with this community and these people and the passion um, and uh, the passion for basketball and, and things like that that you guys bring. And you guys made the decision really easy to come back here. So, uh, you know, me and my family, uh, obviously my wife and my three kids are unable to be here today, but we're so excited to be back. Um, we have two goals to come back here for, and that's to win a championship here in Memphis and to, be, to carry on the tradition of the Memphis Grizzlies. It is certainly great to have Mike back in Memphis. One final note to pass along, and unfortunately, it's a sad one. Earlier this week, former television personality and longtime wrestling host and promoter Corey Macklin was tragically killed in a single car accident in Panola County in Mississippi. Corey was as friendly as he was popular and always had a smile on his face and his energy in front of the camera or behind the scenes was second to none. Corey was a graduate of Billington Central High School. He leaves behind a wife and six children. Corey was just 43 years of age. 
And that'll do it for the show. Remember, you can see any of our previous shows by heading to our website, WKNO.org, and clicking on KNO Tonight. Have a terrific week, and we'll talk to you next time.